giving that processor the control. Everybody knows how farmers have been taken advantage before, and we created a system that allows people to take their farming and have a piece of almost farm equipment, and now you don't have to go to the processor because when you grow hemp and you get a allotted amount of it, what can happen is you try to, everyone tries to take it to the processor at once and the processor pushes everybody away and then drops the price down. And then it affects the farmer and his products and his costs. So we created a solution for not only the farmer but everyone so you can have a, a valuable solution. Uh, it's a turnkey system. Uh, everything is automated. It comes with a full-time engineer. Uh, so everyone, everyone gets to sleep safe at night. That's really what people want in today's world. People want automation, they want safety, they want efficacy, and they want results. And that's the system that we created and what can, we can do. And we did this through a process that pretty much fi uh, fa falls in line with the GMP process and standards, if people are familiar with that. Um, yeah, it's very clean, it's safe, uh, it's, e it's economical, and it's affordable. And next slide, please. This is kind of the process. Uh, it's a pretty unique, but, but also a simple process. We, we take uh, and bale it, we bale the hemp, and then after the hemp is baled, it's, it comes in on a conveyor belt, it's sliced, and then it's pressed, and then we use an ethanol-based system, and uh, we use cold, extremely cold temperatures, and we're able to extract everything out. Um, these are our competing technologies that we see. Uh, and we put these up here because these are kind of systems that can be mobile and can be moved. There is definitely other competition, but those would be like a standalone lab or something like that. So, I mean, I don't, I don't even really need to talk through those numbers. I think you guys can see them. They're, it's, a, it's a pretty drastic difference. Uh, so basically, we, we have the system set up in a, in a leasing model. Uh, and it's kind of a... A, a also a royalty that goes along with it, but it's unique because we need to work with farmers that are going to have good product and are going to put product in our machine constantly. Because if they're not processing and making money, we're not making money either. So it's a, it's a model where we have to build a relationship with our customer, and that's what we want. Um, we're also going to be doing, uh, uh, there's also oil sales, um, and then we also offer uh, training and support as well. And now I'm going to uh, let Risto take over. He kind of handles the investing and financial stuff. Yeah. Risto the Rockstar has taken over. Hi. I am a lead investor in this company. And lead investor, as you know, means the first guy who actually goes through the numbers and what they are doing and decides that, OK, this has such a great upside and such a great chance to succeed that it warrants the investment. And then the lead investor puts the money in and calls all his friends to also invest in this company. And put it back, I haven't even introduced myself yet. <laughs> so I started investing in 1996 uh, with stock trading. And it went online in 1998. I don't know whether it went online so early here in the US, but in Finland it did. And uh, starting 2001, I've been doing startups. I have 35 years of CEO experience. And since 2004, I have invested in companies of other people, done dozens of deals and, and stuff. I am a professional investor. And my aim here is to present this case uh, from a professional, like number-oriented guy's point of view. So now, when I came, it was about six months ago, and this company had recently fixed the valuation of itself to 12 million US dollars. And the reason for this is simple, because we know in investment circles that valuation is the money Demanded times three. It's such simple, actually. You always give 30% to the investors because that's what they expect. And, and that's what we also did. So we... Uh, I tell you soon what happened in March, but this slide tells you what has happened after March, after this valuation was fixed. That we have found the right team for the job. We have four team members here, and the others are doing their work in Estonia, 
in the US. Our machine, six months ago, it was six months away, but now it is actually three weeks away. So our machine, the mechanical part, is ready next month. And uh, during this time, we have found that uh, that there is an actual market for this thing. Uh, we have leads to approximately 13 uh, machines that we can sell at the instant when these guys see that it's producing oil. Because the fact is that it's pro not producing oil now, it's producing it in three weeks. Next. So, uh, this is the cash flow uh, graph. And um, what it means is that when uh, I invested with my Bitcoin millionaire buddies, it was in May 2018. I'm sorry, English is not my native tongue. That's why I need to, you know, figure out the numbers of months and, and stuff. Uh, at present, we have burned half of the money, but we still have half left. And uh, our machine is producing the crude, the undistilled oil, uh, in next month. And the distillation unit we will have ready in December. So after this, we can do two things. Uh, we can start selling the oil that we are producing from the machine, and also we can uh, sell the leases of the machine to our clients because they don't want to buy air, they want to buy a solid machine that is producing oil. And, and that's what we are doing. So uh, after these things happen, then something starts to happen with our cash flow as well. So uh, during uh, like the end of this year, we're gonna burn that million that we have. And we still need another million because we have some expenses before the leasing royalties and the oil sales st start to kick in. But when they do, then we have the proverbial hockey stick and we are gonna make much money. So, to put it as simple as possible, number-wise, each unit that we sell is a five-year lease contract and our cumulative royalties from such a contract is 20 million US total in five years. And this is regardless of what happens to the price, for instance. Because even if price goes to 1200 in five years, which we'll do, we are still making the same because we are, it is not percentage, it is a fixed sum. The our royalty per kilogram, it is a fixed sum, and we have set the sum such that our uh, unit, our solution, is cheaper than the competitors. And if it so happens that we have the chance to operate these units ourselves, obviously it is a little bit, uh, like, uh, takes a little bit more work, but it is also more profitable. So each such line is 60 million revenue to our company in five years. So it's actually pretty simple to see how valuable our company is. You just add them up and then you compare it to the valuation that we have. So next. Okay, let's go through that again. So 20 million was each uh, line or machine or unit that is leased. And 60 million is, is one that is kept in-house and it's producing oil and is the oil. So the solid case for our company means that we pretty much manage to do what we, what we say we are doing and nothing special happens. In this case, uh, our company will be valued at three to 500 million in five years. But even if it doesn't, this is also the number of money that we are able to make in, in five years. So if we just make this money and then we discard the company, we are, we are still, you know, up. Because it cost you only 12 million to buy, and now we have like 500 million. But it doesn't always happen so that everything happens perfectly. So we outlined a few scenarios here that are what if something does not work out? So, okay, the first one is that we find out that everybody can do the same thing. We don't have any technological advantage whatsoever. Everybody can do the same thing. We are not going to sell any single machine ever. So if such a thing happens, we can still produce oil ourselves. It will take five years before the price goes down to 1,000, 
and our production cost is 400 per kilogram because we don't need to pay royalties to ourselves. So, assuming this, it, it's not going like too badly. Next. Okay, this is the scenario that something goes too badly. It, it is a realistic thing. When I came to this company, I assessed that the probability that we are even alive next year at the same time is 30%. Actually, I closed the investors by saying the same thing, because the investors appreciate realism. They appreciate that the company is well, like understanding that in many cases the most probable scenario is to lose everything. But okay, in our case, even if we, we somehow manage to destroy all the money and sue each other and uh, like destroy the whole rig, the technology is still worth, probably worth that the 12 million that you are now buying it for. And uh, like including all the team. And there is, there is a million in, in the bank bank stuff. Okay, next. But another scenario what can go wrong is that we do what we promised but we are fucking late. So it takes like, uh, I don't know, three months, six months, even 12 months before uh, we manage to get the machine ready or sales going or oil flowing or anything. If that happens, obviously, we're gonna need more money. Like, we are now raising 1.7 million. What we think we actually honestly need is uh, between 500 to 1 million. But it's good to always have a little bit extra, right? But in this case, the extra is not enough. I mean, we have the whole current and markets are shrinking, oil, oil, price, oil prices going down and everything. So, by delaying a full year, it means that half of our company value is sliced up. And only 100 to 200 million is left. I'm sorry. But then there is also the possibility that because we have something that we are not telling you too much because it is research and development. It's, it's related to graphene that is there in, in the hemp stock if you just look carefully. And uh, that there are like many options and ways how we can perform even better. For instance, we get even more stellar team members. We go to retail. The retail profit is like 10 times bigger than wholesale anyway. So we don't need to do much, but if we do everything right, then it's going to be a billion dollar company and go IPO. So, like, as you can see, the, there are many ways how, how this can play out, and they are listed there, but to my eye, it seems that they are not actually that too bad. So, what we are offering you, uh, this is a, you know, ready-made deal, because I bought the same deal five months ago, when we didn't have the team, we didn't have, you know, investors. We, we didn't have money, obviously, because I, I, I brought it. We didn't know about the markets and our machine assembly had not even started. So why are we selling at this ridiculous valuation? Uh, the reason is simple, because I am an investor and I was, you know, early, I was early on to, to tell our CEO that, hey, investors always want to have 30%. He was thinking of a smaller number, but I, I, I thought that, hey, it's not the way the world works. Everybody must get their share, right? So that's why half of the 30% is still for sale, and this is the price. And we are not going to raise the price until the 1st of October. And even then, it will only be $1 per share. Now it's 0 0.75. And this is all the money that we need, unless we are delayed like 12 months. But it's not very likely, because when, when I came to this company, after all, I'm an investor, I, I, I don't get paid by the company. I, I checked out what they're promising concerning the machine assembly, for instance. It's only delayed two weeks in five months. So it's unlikely that in the next two weeks it will be delayed five months, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, and I'm totally like, able to discuss all the numbers of this company and, 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 and like everything else from a purely like uh, professional investor perspective. Uh, Sam is the guy who, who knows the other things in the company. So Sam, do you have anything to say? Okay. Yeah, what am I looking at here? Why is this fire? Oh yes, Sam, <laughs> Sam is looking at the fire and uh, it was actually Andrew who wanted to put it there and, and they are prompting me to tell that I am so sad 
that my uh, historical heritage castle built in 1400 in Estonia, where I used to live. It just burned down two weeks ago. And, and I am sad about it. The Estonian national television, actually, they uh, like quickly uh, gathered a documentary, 20 minutes about me, so now I cannot like even walk in the streets of Tallinn without everybody knowing that my castle just burned. <laughs> and I did not even have insurance, which hurts because my, it was a big one. So why it is there uh, as the, you know, the reason why, why, why this castle is here, it's giving the sense of urgency. Because like, this is the simplest play that you can have on CBD industry. Like we are making the oil. Like nothing happens without the oil. Uh, other people have like this and that, like very, uh, how to say, elaborate business models. But this is very simple. We just make the shovels and then we lease them out so that the oil producers need to give us money every month. And if they are so unbelieving that they don't want to buy, it, then we are just going to produce the oil ourselves and then rake in three to four times the profit yeah. per machine. So yeah, we have plans A and plan B and the both of them are bringing us money. Sorry that I talked about money, but I, I haven't done anything else in my life, can you believe? <laughs> oh yeah, this is an investor event, so maybe it's okay. <laughs> Any questions? questions? Yeah, if anyone has any questions. So if I understand it correctly, you make a machine, do you also grow the hemp? Well, we have an R&D facility where we're growing hemp, but it's it's mainly just for us to do R&D. We can set that okay. we, we we have an oil sale right. system that we have can be set up and is and set up. And you just for. started selling the oils. I saw the graph. It looked like we were selling oils already. We will be selling. Do you want to go back to that graph? Yeah, no, we did that. No, we are not yet. Selling not yet. The oil. It starts in January two thousand. Oil sales begin, that's January 19th. Yeah. And then the unit was just completed. The first unit will first be completed in two weeks. Two, three weeks, yeah. <coughs> and at that part is producing crude. Then uh, our like finalization of the distillation unit, distillation unit will still happen. Another 20 foot container. And we have, we're about to file, I think, what is it, 16 more tablets? And one of the unique things about our company is it's housed inside a container. So us as a company is going to keep growing with other technologies in containers. So we so uh, honestly down the road could be, I don't like to use the name John Deere, but we are, can put a lot of equipment out into this world that is based on the plant itself. So it's an Estonian based company. Um, it was uh, created in Delaware. And then we have offices in California and manufacturing and R&D in Estonia. Who's your, who's your accounting, accounting firm? Um, that I don't know. I don't know if it's done through Wilson Sassini, which is the big law group that is uh, our partner. So it's a U.S. company, but the Correct. operations are in Estonia. Yeah, information to everybody that you are investing in a U.S. company, <laughs> so you already know. Like all these things, no need to invest to Estonia, no conversion to Euro need. <laughs> oh, so you had a question? Yeah, can the machine and the space inside of it be certified as food safety? Or, and, and what do you know of that? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, uh, 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 that's honestly the end goal, yes, of course. Because we, we want to be able to produce, I mean, we're creating this technology so we can have a safe product in the marketplace. That is the biggest concern of our company, and we believe that with the right team, the right uh, automation, we can, and the right tracking systems, we can really provide a, a lot of data and analytics on how to, how to get the best in product. Yeah, I mean, our, our patents are, uh, I mean, we work, uh, you can look up the law group that we kind of work with. It's uh, Wilson Cincini. 
uh, probably one of the best uh, law firms and biggest in, in, the, in the United States. So they handle all of that from a patent standpoint. I'm not super voiced on that, so I really don't want to answer it because I don't want to misinform you. But we are patented and protected with our, uh, our processes and, and mechanical parts that are in, in, the, in the system. Any other questions? Oh, every investment and system comes with a free hat. <laughs> <laughs> but the roads you have to buy for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate everyone's time. Thank you.